Right. Okay, I'm going to put the phone down. Well, uh, okay. Yeah, typically, uh, you, yes, you are listening to an air traffic controller. Um, they're usually sitting in front of a radar screen, and they're telling you, they're giving you instructions as you would approach an airport. Um, as you get closer to an airport, such as Albany or, in this case, Reagan National, you would then switch to the tower frequency, and the tower would then handle and give you clearance for landing. So that's kind of the answer to that. Okay. Um, so not every airport is open 24-7. Albany International Airport is open 24-7 and staffed, uh, but not every airport, some of the smaller airports with towers such as Schenectady, for example, do close uh, maybe 9, 10 in the evening because of the low traffic volume. In those situations, um, pilots will then uh, transmit on that same frequency generally and alert other pilots to their location or position in the pattern. And this is not that uh, atypical in terms of what you would do at a small airport that has no tower. So there are small airports that have no tower, and in those situations, pilots are communicating on a common traffic advisory frequency, letting other pilots know where they are and what position they are in terms of landing. And it works very well, it's very safe, and this happens every day. Um, now at the larger airports, of course, such as Reagan National, um, that typically does not happen. But in this situation, the pilots knew uh, exactly what to do, and they were never outside of contact with air traffic control. In fact, they were speaking to air traffic controllers in Virginia the whole time. And when they were told to switch to the tower frequency and noted that there were no controllers responding to them at the tower, they went ahead and went back to the uh, air traffic controllers in Virginia, uh, and then they were able to proceed and land at Reagan National. So this does happen um, at even at large airports when they do close uh, later at night. Can you hear me on the phone? Okay. Okay. Uh, Tori, that's an excellent concern, and I, I, uh, I understand and I would agree with that, that at a larger airport such as Reagan National, uh, with so much traffic on the ground, uh, that you would be concerned that the runway is clear of uh, other traffic, that it's clear of debris, and uh, that is certainly a concern. Uh, at that hour of the evening, though, there's probably not very much traffic, and the pilot could watch out on his own. Uh, however, in such a such a large airport as Reagan National, you would really expect you would expect there to be a tower and ground controller on on duty twenty four seven. Having only one tower controller that that can that uh, having only one tower controller that undertakes all of the responsibilities uh, seems maybe quite not quite enough. Uh, I know here at Albany, uh, typically there are two. Okay, whoops, just received a message there. Okay. Um, yeah, hold on. I think I got a good response here. Um, so, Tori, overall, I feel that the uh, air traffic control system worked the way it should have, the way it does in this situation. Um, I don't believe the pa passengers were ever in any jeopardy. Um, the pilots knew what to do. Uh, the other air traffic controllers knew what to do. And again, at maybe uh, some smaller airports, it's not atypical for the tower itself to be closed uh, at that hour of night and for the control to take place from the regional controllers, which is what happened in this situation. So I don't believe that there was ever any uh, safety issues here and the system did work as it should have. Uh, should there be more controllers at a sensitive airport such as Reagan National? Uh, I would tend to agree with that, especially since it's restricted airspace uh, after 9-11 and uh, it's a security sensitive area. Um, but you have to take in the human factors consideration. Having one person there in the tower cab where you know a person needs to go to the bathroom and yes, this person also had some late uh, shifts 
Um, that's an issue. Yeah. Does that help? <laughs> okay. Go to uh, youtube.com slash Joel Glick, and I'll post it there. Oh, no problem, Tori. Glad I could help. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Tori. Bye-bye. So just, uh, I'll just finish up here. Uh, let's see. So I think that to allay passengers' concerns about this particular issue, uh, the system did work as it was supposed to. Uh, it's not all that uncommon that a, an airport would be closed, actually, at that hour of night, although at a larger airport you would suspect that there should be someone in the tower cab. And it is a human factors issue, and I think the FAA has uh, looked into this already, and I believe that uh, staffing at the Reagan National Airport will be up to two folks to handle all the duties, which is uh, tower, ground, and also uh, delivering clearances. Uh, it can be done by one person when the uh, when there's not a lot of traffic, but you can see what happened in this particular situation. Thanks.